I'm Alex Anderson. Since the secrets of the silkworm were discovered by the ancient Chinese, silk has been considered an incredible luxury. Today we get to meet two artists who have given themselves the pleasure of working with this opulent fabric. We'll learn how to hand dye silk using a technique inspired by a time-honored Japanese method. And we'll also meet an artist who weaves silken threads to create magnificent quilted art pieces. I guess you could say we're quilting in the lap of luxurious silk. Next on Simply Quilt. Welcome to Simply Quilt. Silk and quilt have been together for a really long time. In fact, quilters of the Victorian age were fond of using silks in their work long before the horse and buggy went out of style. But those ladies probably never dreamed of using it like Annette Rogers. This North Carolina native constructs her delicate, beautiful pieces one strand at a time. This woman is up to something. She's supposed to be a quilter. After all, she has a quilting workshop. It even has her name on it. But if she's a quilter, then what's she doing with these brushes, these screens, these dyes? What I do is just make the silk pieces and um, mount them on black mat board and frame them as a piece in itself. I just feel that working abstractly gives me a broader way to express myself and it also allows me to express the textures that I do love so much. Using handmade silks as a canvas, Annette has married her love of painting with her love of quilting. I'm still a painter. <laughs> I will probably always be a painter. But by dyeing and painting my own fabrics, it's kind of a bridge for me between being a painter and being a quilter. It's a way to have the best of both worlds. The best of both worlds begins with a bundle of silk called roving. It comes in a long rope like this and I uh, take the silk and um, pull it apart with my hands like that and if you just yank gently it comes apart into small pieces. After the silk is pulled apart Annette layers it on top of a screen. And you can lay it into two layers or three layers, however many you really want to do. And um, each layer is laid perpendicular to the one before it. You have to overlap everything that you lay down. This is silk waste, and I can pull some of that off and, and embed that into my silk, and it makes for just some real interesting textures. Um, another thing you can use is Angelina fiber, which is an iridescent, very fine fiber. And when that's laid into the silk, it really glistens and it's just beautiful. To embed the colors, Annette covers them with another thin layer of silk and then a second screen. She uses water with a few drops of dish soap to wet it down. Only after it's wet can she color it with dyes. Now I'll turn it over and do the other side. I use my hands to make sure that it has gone through all the layers I've put down on both sides. Annette follows the brush wherever it takes her, covering both sides with whatever colors she feels. Now I can peel back the screen and at this point I can still adjust some of the colors if I want to very carefully otherwise the silk will be pulled up. The excess dye is rinsed off and a textile medium is added to keep the fibers bound together. The effect is a single piece of silk that Annette can manipulate into three-dimensional shapes. After the piece is dry it's off to the sewing machine where they're quilted and decorated. This painstaking process results in quilts with unique colors and textures. Annette has also made quilts using more traditional materials, but for now, the future looks smooth as silk. It's just a lot of fun 
and you can't make a bad piece, so there's no wrong way of doing it. Actually, the process of making a quilt is better than the finished product for me. I just enjoy doing it, getting in the studio and letting that sewing machine run. No kidding, Annette, I don't think you can go wrong the way you're working. You know, silk is a natural fiber and it can be washed. In fact, I recommend that you wash it before you work with it, but this is how I'd wash it. I would dilute a mild detergent in a oh, room temperatured water and just kind of softly put the silk in it and see how it's going to react. That way, no surprises down the road. Now stay tuned because when we come back, we'll get to meet the artist who created this incredible piece of silk.